And try your best to either avoid or limit the refined carbs. Ref yeah, I used to think, I used to think all this. I used to think like, oh, I'll switch out white rice for brown rice, right? It has the inner and outermost part of the brain present. I'll, uh, I'll eliminate white bread, right? Get rid of white bread and have whole grain sandwiches, like as if that's not just going to spike your blood sugar and stodge you up with the fiber. And it's devoid of nutrient. Like what is in bread that's going to sustain you? Absolutely nothing. Okay, howdy folks. Um, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different today. I'm going to be reacting to a dietitian who's answering commonly asked questions about going vegan. So let's get into it. Should be interesting. Hey, my name is Delilah and I'm a registered dietitian. Today I'm going to answer some commonly asked questions about vegan nutrition and share with you some tips on how you can go vegan the healthy way. There is no healthy way to go vegan. You're basically uh, sacrificing your health when you voluntarily go vegan. We have essential amino acids, and these are essential because our body cannot make them. Therefore, we have to get them from the foods that we eat. Okay, so eat meat, eat an egg, you get all of your essential amino acids, you get all your essential fats. They're devoid of fiber and sugar, which are non-essential in the human diet. They're non-inflammatory. Happy days. Hey! If a protein food has all the essential amino acids, it's considered complete. So these are typically animal-based foods. like Right, everything she's got on the screen there. So the meat with the associated fats, the eggs, the fish, that they're a complete food. That's what we should be eating. Plant-based foods do not necessarily always have all essential amino acids, and so they're labeled. So that's why vegans have to supplement highly processed protein powders. I mean, there's no way that that's the optimal human diet, right? To consume powders and, and take supplements because your, your foods are devoid of nutrients. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Incomplete. Just because they're incomplete does not make them at all inferior in any way. All <laughs> That's exactly what it means. They're incomplete, so they're inferior. When you're talking about protein, if you look at the profiles in meat and eggs, and now you look at the protein <laughs> profiles in in plant foods, they are inferior because they're incomplete. That's exactly what that means. These foods have all eight amino acids in varying amounts. There's no need to worry about combining rice with beans to make sure that you're getting the right amino acid. No need to worry about it at all. Just eat meat and you're sorted, aren't you? Combination at each meal. As long as you're eating a wide variety of different protein sources. These so aren't really protein sources. Beans, beans, lentils, whole grains, nuts, seeds, soy, tofu, and tempeh. Just terrible. Everything you just said is just terrible. It's catastrophic for human health. Highly inflammatory. I don't think people realize, but... You will be sure to hit all eight amino acids throughout the day. Carbs are very healthy and nutritious for our bodies, and they come in many different... No, they're not. How can something that's non-essential in the human diet, right, that's falsely indicated in a huge ratio that's totally inappropriate, be healthy. There's not one biological reaction in your body that requires a gram of a carbohydrate ever in your life. So how can it be healthy exactly? The quality of carbs is very important. You want- There are no quality carbs. The best quality carbohydrate you ever consume is probably the naturally occurring lactose in milk when you're an infant. That's it. To get whole grain carbs and try your best to either avoid or limit the refined carbs. Ref yeah, I used to think, I used to think all this. I used to think like, oh, I'll switch out white rice for brown rice, right? It has the inner and outermost part of the grain present. I'll, uh, I'll eliminate white bread, right? Get rid of white bread and have whole grain sandwiches, like as if that's not just going to spike your blood sugar and stodge you up with the fiber and it's devoid of nutrient. Like what is in bread that's gonna sustain you? Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Refined carbs are not very helpful to our body because one, they're missing out on the fiber and they're missing- Fiber is non-essential in the human diet. We don't need sugar, we don't need fiber. That is basically carbohydrates. All carbohydrates are sugary, starchy, fibery foods that we don't need to eat ever, so. Uh, it's, it's just strange that she's encouraging fiber consumption. 
on B vitamins, whereas whole grains such as brown rice, wheat bread, quinoa, etc., those have fiber, which is good for your gut and your heart, and they have the B vitamins, which are- Right, meat has all your B vitamins in abundance. You don't ever have to worry about an adequate supply of B vitamins, essential fats and essential proteins when you eat just a ribeye steak, an egg, a piece of salmon. I mean, this is just crazy. It's, fu it's funny how you literally have to like search everywhere for all your nutrients because they're inadequate. They're not good enough. It's not food. They're incomplete. They're not whole food. Really good for our energy. So that's not to say that you can never have white bread or white pasta. It's totally fine to still have those foods in your diet, but you want to make sure that you're prioritizing the fiber rich carbs in your whole fiber rich carbs. Let's prioritize, right? We want to be healthy. So let's prioritize by, by targeting carbs, starting with the most fibrous, I would say, for optimal health, let's do the complete opposite of that. Let's not inflame ourselves. It is absolutely still possible to get enough iron, even if all of your iron sources are plant-based. No, it's not. Sorry, you don't get heme iron that exists in animal products. You're getting non-heme iron in your plants. You're not getting an adequate supply of iron. Pieces of iron are particularly your dark green leafy vegetables, so kale. All right, dark green leafy vegetables have been hybridized by human beings. They don't even closely resemble their ancestor that grew in the wild. Okay, so people that are eating kale and broccoli and all of these things, these like super foods, right? They're not foods. They're not super. They were made by human beings and they're not much older than a thousand years old, right? No way. Make sure you're getting all of this in your diet. It's like humans didn't evolve on it, so why are we worried about it now? Shouldn't be a concern. Collard, spinach, those are very rich in iron, but also beans and lentils as well. And you want to pair those with- oh, Terrible. Beans and lentils are probably one of the worst things for your diet. Sources of vitamin C. So for- You don't need vitamin C in the doses that, that people believe they need vitamin C in when you don't consume carbohydrates. Vitamin C now doesn't compete against glucose, but it does all the time you spike in your blood sugar and all you guys eat if you're on a vegan diet is carbohydrates. So you are always, your vitamin C that you get, right, is always competing against glucose. Where the vitamin C that's found in meat, it's all uptake, uptaken by the body. So all of that vitamin C is utilized. It's uh, bioavailable. It's not competing against uh, any glucose. So. Don't need to worry about vitamin C on a carnivore diet. Example, when you're cooking your beans, cook them in a tomato sauce. A really popular example is China. Yeah, tomato sauce, just um, fructose basically. Or the next time you make your kale smoothie, put some strawberries in there because strawberries are also a really great source of vitamin C. A lot of us have been taught to turn to dairy for calcium because we've been told that the calcium in dairy will help strengthen our bones and make sure we don't get osteoporosis, but actually... Re Just all mammals do it when they're young, right? That's how important dairy is. I mean, it's certainly in that window. So yeah, that <laughs> dairy's, uh, dairy's nowhere near as much of a problem uh, as carbohydrates. Okay, and especially if you're if you're smart and you eat raw cheese and you eat raw milk, okay, um, creme fraiche and and sour cream. Check the ratios. You know you can see what it consists of. The problem is that everyone in supermarkets now is advertising low fat, zero fat. Like that's the pull. Like oh my god, look, wow, look, zero fat. Wow, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. I'm trying to go in there to find my food, and I'm like zero percent, five percent, ten percent. Um, but there you go. It has suggested that people who drink more milk have more bone fractures. So the high protein content in milk, it creates an acidic... What did she just say? There's no way that makes any sense whatsoever. How can that make any sense whatsoever? ...environment in our body. And our body has to bring our insides back to normal. So in order to do that, it needs a buffer. And it gets that buffer from calcium. And where is all the calcium stored in our body? In our bones. So our body resorts to taking the calcium from our bones to rebalance our body. And over time, when that keeps happening, a person can begin to have weak and brittle bones. All right, so yeah, get your eggs in, guys. Get your dairy in. You're gonna get 
plenty of uh, vitamin D uh, and calcium, which you, but you need both. So, uh, which can lead to osteoporosis. It's very possible to get enough calcium on the vegan diet. Plants give you just enough calcium, particularly the dark green leafy vegetables, such as kale, collards, broccoli. The design of vegetables that we made in also, the lab. Fortified non-dairy milks. They're typically fortified with calcium, so those are also a really fabulous source. Milk. So basically, it's water and, and um, emulsifies and stabilizes and, and probably soy, which is one of the worst things I can think of you, that you could consume, or um, almond milk, right? I feel that soy is absolutely a safe and nutritious food and there's no... no it's highly inflammatory. Do not ever eat soy. You need to be afraid of it. The biggest concern about soy is the estrogen content. The type of estrogen in soy is called phytoestrogen, meaning it mimics real estrogen, but it's not actually... But like a lot of things in plants, they mimic the nutrients found in things like meat and eggs but they aren't adequate. They don't do the same job. You're, they're inferior. Estrogen. There is real estrogen in other foods, such as milk, dairy, and eggs. That's really important to remember because that phytoestrogen, it can attach to the estrogen receptors in our body and it can actually displace the real estrogen. If you're eating a proper human diet, the body just functions correctly the way a human being's body should function. Uh, we regulate these things constantly, all the time, uh, perfectly well. That's in other foods, and that's important because it helps regulate how much estrogen we're actually taking in. So when it comes to soy, you want to try to prioritize the more wholesome forms, edamame and tempeh. So I also want to just add that the amount of women that quit being a vegan because they stop having their menstrual cycle, the uh, PCOS, the, the inability to get pregnant, and their hormone problems. So she, she's talking about hormones right now. Plant-based diet is just horrific for women. And if you want to be a healthy female, then this is absolutely mandatory. They go hand in hand. You can't be a healthy female and not have a healthy menstrual cycle. If you want a healthy menstrual cycle, eat animal-based foods. Don't eat plant-based. Because the soy is still in the whole bean form. Edamame are just straight up soybeans, and tempeh is a fermented soybean cake. Tofu is a great option as well. It's a little bit more processed. Yeah, they're all highly processed, these things. And with the imitation meats, try to limit them to be just occasional additions to your meal because they tend to be much higher in sodium and potentially preservatives as well. Yeah, you probably only need to worry about sodium if you're eating a plant based diet. If you're transitioning to a plant-based diet, just know that it is totally normal for you to want to eat more food. Yeah, because you're eating carbohydrates. You're basically uh, activating this addiction for spiking insulin constantly. I don't know of, of any vegan that eats one meal a day. Our ancestors probably ate once a day if they were lucky, right? Once every two days, maybe once every three days. Vegans eat five times a day. These new foods you're eating have less calories in them, so you're going to need to eat more food to feel completely satisfied. 100 calories worth of cheese is much less in volume than 100 calories worth of spinach. But we don't need to count calories. If you're not activating the Randall cycle, you don't ever have to worry about calories. How is it that when I consume my daily food, it comprises of over 4,000 calories? I'm nine stone, I have a six pack. I have veins in my abs. Anyway. Mushrooms or eggplant. So because of that, you technically can eat a little bit more food on a vegan diet without gaining much weight. We're eating more food, more volume, but taking in less calories. When you're on a vegan diet, I do recommend supplementing with B12. Yeah, because B12 resides exclusively in animal products. Doesn't that tell you everything? We need B12. Human beings absolutely need B12, right? But there is no B12 amongst the, the plant diet. So we have to supplement it. Case closed.
So B12 is really crucial to our health because we need it for our red blood cells, we need it for our circulatory health, and even our brain cognition. So B12 is actually a bacteria in the soil, and most Americans today get it from eating animal foods. Right. Now, it's not it's actually in the animal flesh itself. But when animals eat their food, there's dirt on it. So that's actually how they're getting their B12. Right, but that's how we're technically eating vegetarians, aren't we? Cows eat grass, right? And then we eat the cows. That's why, really, grass-fed, grass-finished, pasture-raised, free-range eggs, that's the human diet, if you can. Supplement, make sure you're getting it in the methylated form. And right, that's yeah, because you know, that's it is much processing. easier for your body to absorb. Two other options are... Our ancestors had access to all of that to get their B12, absolutely. Our ancestors were plant-based, yeah, and they, they, they managed to synthesize B12 out of thin air. Magic nutritional yeast, or you can drink non-dairy milks that are fortified with B12. Another major concern for when people are going vegan is that they're letting go of fish, and fish is a major source of omega-3s. So good news, there are plenty of plant-based sources. No, there's not. Sources of vegan omega-3s. No, ALA is not. To break it down. There are actually three types of omega-3s. We have our ALA, EPA, and DHA. ALA is a form of omega-3. Yeah, it's a form, but it's not it's not metabolized the same way that we would metabolize the form of omega-3 in eggs and, and meat and fish. Found in your plant-based foods. So your walnuts, chia, hemp, and flax seeds. And DHA, EPA. Those right, yeah. So well, that ALA, I think at best is 17% absorbed as um, biological omega-3. She's totally wrong about that. You, you're not getting a sufficient amount of omega-3. You're not, because your ALA is not the genuine article, basically. Those are found in your animal-based foods, so your salmon, sardines, etc. Now, our body converts ALA to DHA. As long as you regularly consume omega-3 rich foods, you are going to be okay. No, you're not. So you don't actually absorb anywhere near as much of what you need. It's about 17% on a vegan diet. Again, that's kind of a clear indication as to how wrong this is. Keep in mind that fish, they're getting that DHA from eating the algae. So it's the algae that has the omega-3 in it, not the fish itself. So DHA is a plant-based food. Now, if you just feel like eating- Right, but we don't eat grass because cows eat grass, we eat the cows. It's the same thing. I know, you, and it's just backward thinking, isn't it? Food is not enough. You can take an algae-based supplement. Yeah, another supplement made in the lab by a guy in a white coat. Awesome. So vitamin D is the sunshine vitamin, and that's because our body actually creates it from sunlight. But it doesn't create it from sunlight. You have to consume adequate cholesterol and the UVB rays from the sun synthesize cholesterol. Into vitamin D. Jesus. Depending on where you live during certain times of the year, you probably won't get exposed to that much sun. So you might want to consider vitamin D supplements. Oh, yeah. A vitamin D supplement. <laughs> These guys love their supplements. They love their oil form supplements with all their uh, negative side effects, basically. They're they're no good. You don't wanna you don't wanna be consuming them. The ways to get vitamin D when you are vegan are eggs. Egg. Steak, 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 fish, 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 butter, butter. Get out in the sun. Get out in the sun. End of story. Game over. Non-dairy milks that are fortified with vitamin D. And this fortified. advice doesn't Again. apply just to vegans only. They love the word fortified and supplement. If you live in an area where there is not much sunlight, whether you're vegan or not, definitely should consider vitamin D supplementation. No, don't do that. It is absolutely possible to have a healthy pregnancy on a vegan diet. I can't think of anything worse. If I was having a child with my partner, and my partner is in that crucial window where her health and how she treats her body is optimal for the baby's health and the, the future outcome of that human being in the making, I would absolutely advocate eating ruminant fatty meat, a ton of eggs, fish. All of this stuff is man-made, didn't exist a few thousand years ago, um, and it's been condoned as almost like this mandatory uh, 
way to be healthy as a human. It's just totally incorrect. Definitely do have to be very intentional with the foods that you choose to eat. When a person is pregnant, they have increased needs of lots of different nutrients. For more reason to eat whole foods. There's only a bunch of whole foods that come in the way of meat, eggs, fish, and some dairy products. Any pregnancy, even vegan or not, you still need to work closely with both your doctor and your dietitian to make sure that you are getting the nutrients that you need. So although at first it can seem a little bit challenging and tricky to transition to a plant-based diet, just keep in mind that there are so many benefits. You'll be getting more fiber. Why would you want more fiber? The more fiber you consume, the more digestive related problems you have. It's a fact, we know that. More antioxidants. Less the antioxidants you're talking about are probably uh, phytonutrients, non-essential in a human diet saturated fat so you're decreasing your risk of developing heart disease no your the fats that you're consuming are, are going to increase your risk of cardiovascular problems diabetes high blood pressure diabetes is caused by excess insulin elevation born out of carbohydrate consumption jesus pressure there are also even other benefits as well such as animal welfare the health of the planet the health of the planet what is that anyway what is that? The health of the planet? Are we talking about human beings again? Don't worry about it. There's plenty of planets out there with environments. Don't, need, don't worry about environments, okay, or planets. There's plenty of them out there, right? You're just talking about humans. Save the planet because that's what we need. We need the planet like the planet needs us. The planet doesn't need us. The planet doesn't have feelings, okay? And it has an expiry date just like everything else. It's far better from an ethical standpoint to eat a couple of cows a year compared to flying produce that we make in a lab and farm and the irrigation, the bees that are slaughtered and all those little different micro species and, and the farms just uh, mutilating the, uh, the environment so we can farm and make more designer foods for our natural healthy diet that we didn't evolve on. I mean, it is just seriously. You gotta be kidding me! Even human welfare as well. If you are new to the plant-based diet and you're really concerned about your health, you can absolutely go to your doctor and request some labs. And you can also work with a dietitian that can help put you more at ease to make sure that your diet is supporting your body. Going vegan does not have to happen overnight. Try to start with no, just one thing that. per day. So if that just means changing your regular milk to non-dairy milk, that's a step right there. Or maybe just focus on one meal out of the day. Try your best to make every lunch a plant-based lunch. But keep in mind that this is your oh journey and it's gonna happen at your own pace. Do what works best for you and just be kind to yourself. I will. Holy crap, that just baffles the hell out of me. I look at that and I just can't even understand the logic behind it. There's no ethical stance there. There's no health stance there. If you look at evolution, anthropology, like, I mean, these guys probably don't really quite understand or know about the efficacy of the stable nitrogen 15 isotope testing. You take skeletal remains of human beings, you take collagen out of the bone marrow. We know definitively what it comprised of. It was 70% plus meat. This stuff didn't exist when we were evolving. We made this just recently. So how can it be absolutely crucial that we, we consume it on a daily basis? Fruits and vegetables that don't even closely resemble their natural ancestors that are out in the wild that probably don't, didn't even exist in your country of origin. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one.